Type 1 diabetes is a chronic illness resulting from a lack of insulin. Children and adolescents that are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes no longer have insulin produced by their pancreas. For this reason, we must provide insulin to them by injections or through a device called an insulin pump. If you do not have enough insulin, your blood sugar will go high. This is called hyperglycemia. Factors that can make your blood sugar go high are not enough insulin, not enough activity, and too much food. If you have too much insulin, your blood glucose will go low. This is called hypoglycemia. Factors that make your blood glucose go low are too much insulin, too much activity, not enough food. Stress and illness can also affect your blood glucose readings. Hypoglycemia is a medical event if it is not managed quickly. To prevent the blood glucose from dropping further, it must be treated with juice or other items provided by the parent. If not treated, it can become a serious medical event and can lead to a loss of consciousness. Finding a balance of activity, food and insulin can be a challenge, especially for children that are growing and active. Blood glucose levels in children can fluctuate frequently during the day depending on what they are eating, their activity level, and how much insulin they have in their system. It is important to know what a child's blood glucose is at any given point in time. This can be done through a simple test that you can see being done in the background. We will go into this in detail later in the video. The ideal blood glucose reading depends on the child's age and what is planned for the day. This reading should be outlined in their individual diabetes care plan. Blood glucose monitoring is needed at least four to five times a day. Before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, and at bedtime. It is also required any time a child does not feel well or verbalizes the symptoms of a high or low blood glucose. Children with an insulin pump or those taking insulin before all meals require this reading to calculate the dose of insulin to take before any of their meals or snacks at school. Testing blood glucose at school is very important to ensure a child is safe. We need to provide support to young children that may not be able to perform this task independently, as well as assisting all children and youth to feel comfortable in performing this task within the school environment. Although there are many different types of meters available on the market, we have chosen to highlight some of the most common meters used by children. The principles of how to use various glucose meters are very similar. Step 1. Place all the supplies on a clean, dry area. Step 2. Wash and dry your hands thoroughly. The child should wash their hands as well. If soap is not available, Use an alcohol swab or hand cleanser and be sure to allow the skin to dry completely. Hand washing is very important as anything on the skin can affect the blood glucose reading. If a child has eaten an apple, the sugar from this apple will still remain on their finger and can be reflected in the glucose reading obtained. Step 3. Load a lancet into the lancet device. Twist off the top to remove the cap and expose the needle. Place the lid on the device and engage the device. The lancet device can be adjusted for needle depth. This should be preset by the parents. Step 4. Open the bottle of strips. 
and be sure your hands are clean and dry. Insert one strip into the meter. Remember to close the lid on the strips so they do not spill. The meter will display a drop of blood, meaning it is ready to have blood applied. Meter is now ready for use. If the meter shuts off or the drop symbol is not displayed, remove the strip and reinsert it to see the drop of blood displayed. Step 5. Pricking the finger. Some areas of the fingers are better for obtaining blood samples than others. The areas shown here hurt less and obtain the best drop of blood. We rotate which finger is used to ensure we do not develop areas that are calloused. When the blood sample is obtained, wipe away the first drop Melt the finger by gently applying pressure. Place the strip close to the drop of blood. It will suck up the blood sample into the strip. Some strips will draw blood from the top of the strip and others from the side. This will be clearly marked on each strip. The meter will begin countdown and display the blood glucose reading. If you did not get enough of a blood sample, the meter will tell you to add more blood or to use a new strip. Step 6. Reading and recording your blood glucose result. Once the reading is displayed, it should be recorded in a logbook or agenda provided by the school or parents. Logbook or agenda records of readings are important so parents can adjust their child's insulin based on these readings. If by chance you did not write down the reading right away and it is no longer displayed on the blood glucose meter, do not worry. This reading can be obtained by pressing on the M button to access the internal memory of the blood glucose meter. Step 7. Place all of the supplies in a safe dry place until you need them again.